With a climax we're already aware of, the Big Short still manages to gradually spin gold out of straw. Canada be damned, I'm going to the Klondike. The Klondike is Canada. Giorgio, you be doing just fine, brother. You can make a movie about anything, so long as you're inventive, and make it appealing. The world of finance surely isn't the first thing that comes to mind, yet when it covers the worst financial crisis in history, and that crisis has affected millions of people, the pool of interested parties are beyond just Wall Street. 2015's The Big Short does this, while making it comprehensible to the common folk. The Big Short isn't entirely about the 2008 financial crisis. Although it ventures into the lead-up to the crisis, its main focus is on the few people who saw it coming and sought to profit from it. The default rates are already up from 1-4%, to 4 fellas. And if they rise to 8%, and they will, a lot of these triple Bs are going to zero too. And that is an opportunity. Okay, you're saying that at 8% the bonds fail and we are already at 4%? That's right. If they go to 8 it's Armageddon. Yeah, that's right. How come nobody's talking about this? What if he's right? You want him to be right. This guy walks into my office and says, those same banks got greedy, they lost track of the market, and I can profit off of their stupidity? Fuck, yeah, I want him to be right. Not all of the film's main characters are working together, but their goals and strategies are the same. Bet against the housing market, or short it, in hopes of a housing market bubble bursting, and in turn receiving a massive payout. With something called a credit default swap. It's like insurance on the bond, and if it goes bust, you can make 10 to 1, even 20 to 1 return, and it's already slowly going bust. The US, having never experienced a housing market crash, makes these men in finance a pariah in the eyes of Wall Street gatekeepers. But unlike their dismissive peers and clients, these men did some investigating and number crunching to discover they were on the fringes, yet they were right. I'm jacked. Holy shit. I'm jacked! I'm jacked to the test! As I said before, The Big Short makes Wall Street accessible as much as it can to the layman without getting too deep in the weeds. The ways in which it accomplishes this are both innovative and entertaining. Usually, they're successful in doing this with some sort of visual representation or vignette, sometimes with a celebrity breaking it down. Here's world-famous chef Anthony Bourdain to explain. I ordered my fish on Friday, which is the mortgage bond that Michael Burry shorted, but some of the fresh fish doesn't sell. Whatever crappy levels of the bond I don't sell, I throw into a seafood stew. That is a CDO. What also makes The Big Short alluring is the way in which the plot unfolds. You'd think a film which revolves around the world of finance would be quite dry, even if it's leading to an economic meltdown. Yet the energy that fuels The Big Short feels less about statistics and more about being a genuine investigative piece. Can you name one time in the past year where you checked the tape and you didn't give the banks the AAA percentage they wanted? we don't give them the ratings, they'll go to Moody's, right down the block. If we don't work with them, they will go to our competitors. Not our fault, simply the way the world works. There's a bubble. Mark, you sure? Yeah, yeah, it's time to call bullshit. Bullshit on what? Every fucking thing. As the plot continues to pick up speed and more pieces start to fall into place, a sense of impending turmoil develops in the gut of the audience. We already know what's coming, yet even when it arrives, it's hard not to get swept up in the panic. We fired 3,200 workers. The manufacturing index also fell in the month of March. It's starting. Warning that economic growth is happening. They're gonna lose their houses, they're gonna lose their jobs. Will you listen to me? This is like the end of capitalism. This is like the dark ages all over again. By the third act, we're knee-deep in the meltdown, and the effects of it can be seen. For some of our characters, the frustration of the situation came before the collapse. 
If we're right, people lose homes, people lose jobs, people lose retirement savings, people lose pensions. You know what I hate about fucking banking? It reduces people to numbers. Here's a number, every 1% unemployment goes up, 40,000 people die, did you know that? No. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. Whereas others are feeling the full force of it during it. Look, I get that this is personal for you, but we have a fiduciary responsibility. No, no we don't. Respons nobody's acting responsible. Fuck responsibility, are you kidding me? That agitation is translated beautifully because of the Big Short's all-star cast. None of the well-known actors feel like themselves, or anyone they've portrayed before. They feel absorbed into their characters, and the Steadicam documentary style of shooting helps highlight the volatility these characters are experiencing. Granted, not every character is feeling it the same way, even though they all hit the jackpot. Some fall to pieces while others feel unfazed. Their destination may be the same, but their arcs differ. This, alongside the fact that they're based on real people, is perhaps what rings true for me. Not everyone in the big short has a happy ending, even though everyone got the ending they sought out. That, above anything else in the big short, illustrates the sheer magnitude of the 2008 financial crisis. For an industry that breeds some of the most selfish people in corporate America, at least some of our characters can enjoy their success because of the bigger events crashing down all around them. Unlike the usual caricature of Wall Street, these characters have some semblance of a conscience or a soul. Yes, we root for them because they're framed as the underdogs, and many of those arrogant pricks of Wall Street laughed in their face. But we also root for them because we got to know these pricks alongside our main characters and quickly discovered they're far worse. Do people have any idea what they are buying? I, I focus on the immigrants, you know? Once they find out they're getting home, they sign where you tell them to sign. Don't ask questions, don't understand the rates. <laughs> Fucking like idiots. Yeah. And you target immigrants too. <laughs> their, their, their credit actually isn't bad enough for him. <laughs> I don't get it. Why are they confessing? They're not confessing. They're bragging. I get it. For some, there's more appeal in watching paint dry than watching a movie about finance. And if that's the case, I completely understand. I'll admit, The Big Short isn't for everyone, but it is accessible to anyone. Some details may need to be reviewed a second time to be fully understood, yet it isn't calculus. The Big Short is within your grasp. And with great acting, a steady plot, and some engaging breakdowns, The Big Short didn't fall short at all.